so at some point the core will be entirely helium. So you've fused all of that hydrogen into this reaction, you've created all of your energy, you've created all this brightness, and now you just have a core of helium. So what do you do with this? You might think the sun would stop at this point, but what's actually going to happen is you're going to end up with a helium core surrounded by a ring, a shell, that's burning hydrogen. Where does this hydrogen come from? Well, for the rest of the star, is, the rest of the sun is still there. So it's starting to pull the rest of the hydrogen on the outside towards the core. Or probably more the blast burning radius is moving outwards. Ah, so it's starts, like a so forest it's, fire. It started yes. in the middle, but now it's starting to work outwards. So it's spreading essentially on the inside of the sun. Yeah. So you're going to get a, a core of helium, which isn't burning. Yep. It's just sitting there. So it's inert kind of dead weight. Yes. And now the burning's happening in a shell around it. Okay. At this point, the sun will start expanding dramatically and become a red giant star. So, and that's because it's starting to really puff out getting these other layers. You have a whole bunch of stuff in the middle that is expanded but not doing anything. It's one of those really complicated things. I mean, this is something that always bugged me when I studied this. And why? What's happening is the core is still going to be anything denser than now. Yeah. But it's actually going to have this huge outer envelope that's going to be very low density. I mean, yep. right now, the density of the outer parts of the sun is like 6,000 times less than air. Yep. But what's actually going to happen is the outer parts are going to expand much more out to beyond the orbit of Mercury, and the density is going to get way low. Okay. And this is one of those things that no one's ever come up with a good explanation for. It's... It's something that if you do a mathematical model, our equations tell us it happens. Mm -hmm. We observe it happens in other stars, yep. but there doesn't seem to be any simple way to explain it. So I always try to come up with a simple way to explain everything in this course, but yep. it does not seem to be, it's an interplay of all sorts of complicated things to do with how radiation interacts yep. with matter and how pressure moves and so on. So uh, even the greatest experts in this field don't think there's an explanation. It's something that we understand in the sense that we we can describe it with models and data. Using laws of physics we know and data we know, um, but it's a complicated thing and there just doesn't seem to be a way that you can explain it simply. Yep. And so at this point, the sun expands, it becomes much more luminous, um, and it's now burning hydrogen around this helium core. Yep. Now, to begin with, the helium core is just a blob of hot gas. Yep. But as this hydrogen shell around it keeps burning, it's going to be dumping more helium on the surface. That's right. So it's adding essentially another helium layer to this helium core. Do you imagine it's like a forest fire. You've got the burnt area, and then as the fire moves forward, it leaves more burnt area. Yep. And now that burnt ash is all accumulating on top of this helium core. And so the helium core is going to shrink and shrink and shrink mm -hmm. as it gets because there's no heat inside, it's, it's, it's got leftover heat, it's still going to be very hot because it's surrounded by nuclear yeah. fusion burning, but it's not actually generating heat itself. So it's just going to get denser and denser and denser. And then something very strange happens, which is where quantum mechanics comes in, the okay. generosity pressure. Now, this of course is your field yeah. of expertise because this is crucial to the supernovae that you explode. So do you want to explain what generosity pressure is, what stops this thing shrinking all the way to a black hole? Well, at some point you've... Sh you have so much stuff happening on the inside, you're packed with, well, how many does protons and neutrons does helium have? There's it's uh, two protons, Four. two neutrons, yep. two electrons. But you're not doing anything with them, right? We're not creating more, we're not creating a nuclear reaction. So we start building up that pressure and pressure in the inside. Now, remember when we looked at that original plot and we were looking at, as we had our hydrogen and helium, we were looking at the, how the elements change. There are some really at the top, irons at the top, then we have hydrogen a little bit down, and we have some of the other ones. Well, at some point, we essentially can't pack them anymore because the neutrons won't allow us to. Yes, yeah, so what's actually happening here is, if you remember, we looked at atoms. Yep. Um, why doesn't the electron fall into the nucleus? The reason is yes. quantum mechanics. That's they right. behave like waves, yep. and you can't compress a wave too much because its wavelength gets small, its energy gets large. Now, in a normal, like a hydrogen, you've got one electron yep. and it's compressed into 10 to the minus 10 of a meter. But now we've got all the electrons in this large ball. It's basically behaving like a very large atom. Mm. It's a lot larger. It's maybe a few thousand kilometers across this ball of helium in the middle of this red giant star. But it's also got a lot more than just one electron. That's right. And the electrons are all starting to fill up the energy levels. They're so compressed, their wavelengths are getting short, which means the energy gets high. Yep. And it turns out this means that even if it cools down, the electrons still have to move fast because quantum mechanics prevents them from slowing down. So normally you only get pressure because something's hot. Yep. But now, because it's shrunk so much, quantum mechanics kicks in and you're going to get pressure that doesn't depend on the temperature. It's called degeneracy pressure. Yep 
the complicated quantum <laughs> mechanical reasons I won't go into. But this is basically the same thing that occurs in white dwarf stars that we'll talk about later. So now basically you've got a little mini helium white dwarf star in the middle of a red giant sun. So you've essentially, you have all of this helium, it's doing some interesting things, we'll say through quantum mechanics, interesting probably is the correct word here. And now it's acting like this whole new star almost on the inside of another star. So you've got an inert helium white dwarf surrounded by a shell of nuclear. hydrogen burning nuclear fusion, surrounded by a huge red envelope. It's not doing much apart from apply enough pressure to keep the, helium, the hydrogen fusion going. So really the only thing pulling its weight, so to speak, is this hydrogen shell. The hydrogen envelope's not doing anything and its helium core is not doing anything. Yes. And this is actually uh, when the sun gets much brighter. Yep. It turns out it's actually much easier to burn in the shell. There's more area to burn than when it's all burning in the core. So here's a diagram. We'll talk much more about these yep. diagrams later. But we're looking at is a diagram of temperature, and it's plotted backwards for reasons we'll go into later. So these are hot down this end and cold down that end. And this is the luminosity. So this is where the sun starts off, and that's basically where it sits for 10 billion years. And so this is our previous measurements telling us it's about 6,000 or so. Yeah, so it's been there four and a half billion years now, and it's got another five or six billion years to go. Yep. And then it will start getting cooler yep. and brighter. So this is now that we've used up all the hydrogen, we're starting to... In the core. In the core, that's right. Now, we now have this helium core and this hydrogen shell on the outside. Yep. So it starts off expanding a little bit, then that core becomes a white dwarf, yep. which happens somewhere around here. And at that point, the star gets a lot brighter, but a lot cooler. cooler. So it becomes very, very big. Yep. It now might go out to about the orbit of Venus. Still not, not, not when the Earth gets swallowed, that happens later. But uh, it's getting uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. And so if, the Earth will definitely get very strongly baked at this yes. point. It's very, very hot. But there is a limit. Okay. And the limit is you've got this ball of helium, this helium white dwarf in the center, the helium core. And what's happening is as the, the electrons are moving really fast because of quantum mechanics. Yep. As you squash it more, you're squashing them into a smaller area and therefore they have to go faster because of quantum mechanics. So you might imagine that it will just keep on going up here and up here with the bigger and bigger helium they core. They just keep growing, yep. And the hydrogen shell will work its way outwards till it runs out of hydrogen. But in practice, at some point, this can't happen. This is what's called the Chandrasekhar limit. Yep. What happens here is that basically the electrons, there's a speed limit to how fast they can move, and that speed limit is the speed of light. Yep. And so as you squeeze them faster and faster, quantum hex makes them work, move faster, which gives them more pressure to fend off the enormous weight of everything on top of them. But eventually, once they're going at the speed of light, they just can't go any faster. They hit a speed limit and they can't go any faster, and that's the speed they stay at. That's right. And at this point, if you pile even more helium on top, there's nothing okay. they can do. They'll just keep on shrinking. They can't fight off this enormous pressure. At that point, it'll shrink, get smaller and hotter, and it'll eventually get hot and dense enough that the next step of fusion happens, burning helium to form carbon and oxygen. And that will happen all at once in a massive flash. So essentially it kind of goes up in a big bang. Yes, not, not the big bang, big bang, bang but, but that's a right. big bang. A big bang. Now, normally things in stars burn slowly because yep. if it burns faster, that makes the pressure get bigger, which pushes gas out yep. and then slows things down again. It's self-regulating. Yes. But here, the pressure is caused by this quantum mechanics. So it's not so, caused by the nuclear fusion. It's not caused by temperature. So you yep. can raise the temperature and it not change the pressure. So what happens is the entire core can burn from helium into carbon and oxygen literally in seconds, like two or three seconds. So we're, we're, we're talking about actual seconds, not, you know, astronomers' seconds? Actual seconds. OK. So the, there's an incredible explosion, which is actually totally invisible from the outside of the star. So this is all on the inside around that helium core. It's, it is the helium, helium core. core. The yes. helium core is doing the explosion. And what that does is it what we call lifts the degeneracy. Yep. It's now supported by gas pressure. The core therefore gets bigger because of the heat dumped into it. And that then rearranges all the shells around it and causes a major rearrangement of the overall star. Mm -hmm. But in fact, what happens is the star then gets fainter. You've had this huge explosion in the middle and that goes into pushing material out, oh, overcoming okay. gravitational potential energy. Yes. It doesn't actually make it to the surface and the star actually drops in brightness. Oh, okay. 